When a piece of music has only one melody with no harmony, it's said to be monophonic. This is the texture of the music. Roman Catholic chant is monophonic. Notice that the monks singing in this example are all singing a single melody. When a piece has a single melody with a harmonic accompaniment pattern, it's said to be homophonic. This performance by clarinetist Pete Fountain features a homophonic texture. Fountain plays the melody on the solo clarinet while the band plays a supporting accompaniment. Notice that the melody is in major, giving it a happy feeling. When it's made up of two or more melodies sounding simultaneously, a piece is said to be polyphonic. This fugue by Johann Sebastian Bach is polyphonic. You'll notice that each of the horns is playing a different melody. In a polyphonic texture, each melody is as important as the others, yet they all work together to form a unified whole. This time the work is in minor, giving it a solemn or even sad quality. However, the jaunty rhythm works against this, and sometimes the piece even shifts to major to brighten the mood. originally wrote this fugue for organ, but they've adapted it very nicely for a horn quartet.
The speed of any piece of music is called tempo. We use Italian words to indicate tempo. The most common tempo markings, arranged from slowest to fastest, are largo, andante, moderato, allegro, vivace, and presto. When a piece speeds up, it's called accelerando. When it slows down, it's called retard. When a piece is constantly changing tempo, it's called rubato. The loudness or softness of any piece is called dynamics. As with tempo, we use Italian terms. Piano is soft and forte is loud. The word mezzo is used to mean medium, and the suffix issimo is applied to either word to mean very, as in pianissimo and fortissimo. This suffix is also applied to tempo, larghissimo, prestissimo. Crescendo means to get louder, decrescendo or diminuendo to get softer. Now just as melodies start on the tonic and then move away from the tonic and then come back to the tonic, so all musical pieces start at some place that feels like home and then go away on some kind of journey and then come back again. Usually we have some sense of familiarity established at the first by repeating a tune over and over again until we get to know it and then we have something that contrasts and then we come back and when we come back again, we feel like we've been on some kind of journey. We feel like we've changed somehow. And of course, that's one of the great tricks of composing. And the melody, the harmony, the texture, the rhythm, the dynamics, the, the tempo, all of those things contribute to that sense of form, of departure and return, of, of sameness and otherness. And as we listen to music in this class, we're going to want to keep track of that and look for the things that help create that sense of form, of structure, of departure and return.